You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Since all of us are here in the area, and you're living in Tiberias, imagine this, is the, this line in John's Gospel. It's a little intriguing. I would like to know the answer. It says, other boats came from Tiberias in the direction of Capernaum. So we know this piece of the lake very well. And it, it, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread. So where did that miracle happen? We obviously remember it near uh, Capernaum, in, in, in Tabka. Uh, there's a memory there in Tabka for the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. But it's interesting how to combine that data with this fact, and the name Tiberius is later than the time of Jesus. Herod Antipas has named Tiberius the capital of Galilee in the year 19. So in 10 years, that may not have changed the name of the lake yet, but in a few generations since the city becomes important and is the capital, eventually it also will be the seat of the Sanhedrin for a while, and then it's, um, it gives the name to the lake but the lake wasn't called Tiberias before. So in John's Gospel, it's called Lake Tiberias, you know. So then it's interesting that we have um, this fact uh, here just to combine from a point of view of geography where the miracle happened. It's, I think, an open question, and I wonder what place along here would that, could that have been? It's interesting. Jesus went up on the mountain afterwards, and they went off in the boats, and other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. So maybe somebody can help us out with some more information about this. Some scholarly work is probably done on this, and I'm not aware of it. I'm not familiar with it. So, but we have bigger things to look for because it's important to, these things are important. They're important, uh, I would say they're more than trivia, much more than trivia. But on the other hand, there are bigger things. And this is the question Jesus asked today, why are you looking for me? Because you eat the bread? Or you want to meet me? Like two children are very good smiling at the grandparents because they get some money. Or they get invited to something special. So why are they wanting to be with the grandparents? Because the grandparents are nice to them. And they're at home with their grandparents. The, par the parents are a little more disciplinary. They need to be. That's part of their task. And the grandparents are more... Just they have to do the love side. It's easier. They're the good cops. And not the bad cops. So then why are we looking for Jesus? And there are different people in the gospel looking for him for different reasons. 
you had some intellectuals who were looking to argue with him and to prove him wrong. And then you had others trying to put him in a spot to get him to say things that were politically incorrect or to say things that were religiously incorrect. And it's interesting to watch this um, development of why and what are the motivations for our search for Jesus. Some people want to come to Jesus to feel good. It's a nice feeling when you are close to Jesus. That's okay, but that's a selfish motivation. And one day we feel good, another day we don't feel good, so we don't need Jesus. We're not interested. We're on a roller coaster of feelings. So why do we need Jesus? Why do we want from Jesus? Why are we looking for him? This is very important. St. Augustine had a very interesting uh, comment about how when we eat food, pizza, the pizza becomes part of us, some of it, right? The best of it, the nourishment, becomes part of us. It doesn't, the pizza doesn't exist anymore. But when we take Christ and consume him, we become part of him. We become one with him. To the work of God, to believe in the one he sent. And for us this is clear, we don't have a hurdle dealing with this issue. So we have been raised in the faith, and we have developed the faith, we've grown the faith, and we know who Jesus is, the eternal word of God made flesh. But why? To deepen the reasons, the motivations for wanting Jesus, for seeking Jesus. This is very, very important. We have the first reading with uh, Stephen, who is called before the Sanhedrin. And we had a few days ago, the community was very one heart and one soul. And then the next reading, they're fighting over the Greek widows not getting a fair share. So then they have the wonderful gift of the diaconate of the seven who were chosen to be deacons. And Stephen is one of these. But he must have been incredibly articulate and he was also blessed charismatically with gifts of healing and doing wonders. So then this antagonized a very active uh, Greek-speaking community, which was common here in this region after, uh, after um, Alexander the Great. And the Jewish people even translated the Bible into Greek in Alexandria, in Egypt. And so we have a very vibrant community that's very active and they really accept the message of Christianity and this has produced a tremendous school of theology, various schools of theology in the Greek world, right? And then you have the uh, classical Aramaic speaking and Hebrew scholarly trained scribes and Pharisees and there are thousands of them have become baptized. And so there's an antagonism, there's a tension. Many times we get into tensions and antagonisms, it's really not over the matter, it's over envy and jealousy. Those are the factors that power even the Reformation of the Church, the Lutheran Reformation in Germany, was probably more powered by politics than by theology. And then afterwards it got ingrained with pride and stubbornness and the war, 30 years war, it made horrible deep divisions bigger than the Grand Canyon. So this is a, a big challenge to see what are the motives that are driving us to do anything in our life. And especially to make great decisions and affiliations and alienations in religious matters. And so let us ask for that grace. Blessed are those who follow the law of the Lord who seek. Let us ask for the grace to seek Christ as our Savior. To seek to adore God through the gift given in Christ. To adore him in the Eucharist. To hear his word. To have our life transformed not just to get some consolations and feelings for us to feel good. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.